What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. Today I'm going to tell you to not slow grow your boas. The boa we're going to hold and use as an example is one of my favorite. She's got the nose rub, but it's finally clearing up. I'm going to get off camera so you can take a look at her. And just really pretty, she is a blood T positive, super hypo, I believe. We're not sure. She popped out and she wasn't supposed to be in there, so she's special to me. Now, do not slow grow your boas. I'm going to let that sit there for a second. There are certain ways to feed and grow your boa constrictors. Slow growing is not one of them. Now, I am mad at the term, not the process. So there are a few ways to feed and grow your boa constrictors. And actually, this applies to all snakes in general. There is power feeding. Let's talk about that first. Everybody knows what power feeding is. That is feeding your snake to make it grow big very quickly. That is, I am feeding this snake a rat, something that is probably too big, probably way more frequently than I should. If you want to see how I feed boas, I'm going to put an end screen or something up here in the corner. I'm learning how to do this. Or just search Jason's Exotic Reptiles feeding boas on YouTube. Now, talking about the power feeding again, that is feeding an animal every week, every twice a week, uh, feeding it something that is too large and growing it as fast as you can, basically giving this animal no time to digest. As soon as that swell goes down, you're feeding it something else. That is power feeding. Now, let's go on the opposite side of that, underfeeding. Underfeeding is feeding li too little to keep the snake small. Now, whether that be, that can be through feeding prey size that is too small, at the right frequency or that can be from feeding prey size that is just kind of the right size but not enough so let's say i took this snake here and i fed it every three weeks i fed it a mouse a mouse every three weeks mouse every two weeks that is under feeding i might be feeding at the appropriate frequency every 10 days to two weeks but i'm feeding it something that's too small it's going to keep this snake small this is why i say do not slow grow your boas let's erase that term slow growing it, it's it's a irrelevant term it doesn't make sense the way to feed your boas is the proper way to feed them that to me is slow grown feed them the right way do not feed them too much do not feed them too little this whole slow grown craze has just led to a whole bunch of underfed boas i see boas online and they are a couple years old they maybe look okay you know for size wise but they're skinny and emaciated they have no muscle tone they look terrible stop with the slow growing thing people are taking that in the same way they're saying you know feed on weekly schedule and you're power feeding your snake you are feeding too little you're feeding either stuff that's too small or you're feeding stuff that is uh not frequent enough and and it, it's just killing these snakes it's going to cause more havoc from starvation than it is going to be from overfeeding i would rather have a fat boa than a starved boa any day of the week the amount of stress that puts on the internal organs from the underfeeding and the lack of the nutrition that it needs is going to be way more devastating than the overfeeding and the stress and abuse it puts on the boas this is just my personal experience. There's no scientific journal written about this. I don't have a scientific paper. It is just my personal experience and what I've seen. When you underfeed a snake, it does tremendous things to that snake's body, specifically if, if care isn't on point. Now, there's proper feeding. And I think what most people are trying to say when they say slow grown is feed the bow how you're supposed to feed it. Give it the appropriate size meal at the right frequency. The problem is this slow grown is a stretched out duration of food. In order to get a healthy boa at the stretched out duration, I'll use the extreme example of feed your boas once every eight weeks once they're an adult. That's once every two months, that's six times a year. You should be feeding something that is huge. You should give it something that is going to put a football sized lump into this thing and it, like, a, like a, a big ass rabbit. That's what you need to feed if you're feeding every two months. Do not use my feeding methods and my prey sizing if you're gonna feed like that. And that is the problem with this slow grown, is people are picking and choosing. There is not enough complete information about this slow grown mentality to peep for, for most people who are actually interested in this to understand how to do it. It's, and, and really, I don't see the benefit. Yes, in the wild, they may eat a couple times a year. There's nothing wild about my setup back here. I'm not trying to mimic it. I'm trying to give them what they need, not what the wild would provide them. If I walk outside right now 
it is hot. It's like 90 something degrees out there. I'm in Connecticut. It's hot. That's not what I want. That's not the good environment for me. That is just what I'm walking out into. If I walk out there in December, it's cold. That is not my ideal environment. I cannot live out there naked. I need clothes. I need all this other stuff. We are not in the wild. Just because it happens in the wild doesn't mean we need to create it in captivity. We need to give them what they need in captivity. What is your house's temperature? Probably 70-ish degrees all year round. That is what you need. Not 100 something degrees and sunny and no no relief from the shade if it actually if it is you're going to be in the shade if you stand in the sun for all day you're going to heat stress heat stroke you might die so we're talking about what these snakes need for feeding watch my feeding video that through my years of experience is what i recommend for feeding pay attention to the prey size and the frequency that is as important those go hand in hand it is it is just like temperature and humidity it, it, you need to keep them both in mind. So how to feed properly, go watch my video. I don't wanna go into that whole video all over again, but there is power feeding, there is underfeeding, and then there is feeding the proper way. Slow grown is underfeeding, and I will fight you about that. That is the way I feel. I won't actually physically fight you about that, but I'll argue with you about it. Um, and I can see the other side of the argument. No, it's not, but you know, I've done it and look it, I've, I've kind of get all, I've, I get perfect looking animals. A lot of the people who are pushing this have not been in the hobby for a really long time. I'm not bashing them, but they're using animals that they've had for a couple years and they're saying, oh, slow grown, slow grown. They just have a loud voice on the internet. And that's cool. I have a loud voice on the internet too. You guys are watching my channel. I hope you listen to it. I'm not doing this to to uh, put you in a bad spot. I want you to learn from my mistakes. I want you to learn from what I've learned over the 25 plus years I've been doing this. Is if you slow grow your boas, you're going to kill them when they get older. These people who are pushing slow grown do not have boas that are old enough to know whether it works or not. They've just kind of gotten to the hobby. For the most part, there's a handful of them that have been around for a long time. You need to feed them properly. Now, I feed for breeding, which is different than what you may be feeding for maintenance. Look at your snake. Stop going on charts. Look at them. Do they look healthy? Do they have the right body weight? This girl eats all the time, and actually, she's a little skinny. I can show you her sister, who's half her size, and she is, she is perfect, but she's half her size. This girl's metabolism is flying. Every snake is different. Every snake is gonna grow at a different rate. She is not a fat snake by any means. She's a year old. She is one of my fastest growers. And again, her sister's probably the size of what I have in her, my tail over here. She's a great snake. But you need to look at the snakes, you need to adjust frequently, but use that as your general baseline. My feeding guide that I put out, I put a lot of thought into it. I hope you guys watch it, and I hope you at least take something from it. But if there's anything you take from these videos, it is frequency and prey size. If you're gonna feed more frequent, you need to reduce your prey size. If you're going to feed less frequent and stretch out those durations, you need to increase your prey size. That's why I can grow my Burmese pythons on rats. I don't feed rabbits. I Sometimes I'll feed guinea pigs if I get a good supply of them, but for the most part, they're eating jumbo or colossal rats, the biggest rats I have. But I'm feeding them every week or two. I'm, I'm looking at them. If they're looking skinny, I'll maybe feed them every week and then I'll pull back but I don't have these massive, fat, sloppy looking Burmese pythons. I have good sized Burmese pythons. They're healthy, they breed well, they have no respiratory infections. You don't want a snake that is sitting there like a blob all the time, just digesting its food. And if, if it's digesting its food, it's eating smaller meals. This isn't hard stuff, people. This is, you know, same thing with humans. It's calories in versus calories out. These snakes need a certain amount of calories. If not, you're gonna underfeed them. And Unfortunately, they can't tell you I'm hungry. They don't know whether they're hungry or not. They're always hungry. They're opportunistic feeders. We have to be that voice of reason for them. And it's not hard stuff, guys. This is just simple. Feed your snake the appropriate size meal at the appropriate frequency. So whether you do that slow grown feeding chart or not, keep in mind, you need to increase the prey size if you're gonna do that. If you're feeding your baby snakes every 10 days, babies are a little bit little bit, uh, I'm less concerned about them. It's kind of harder to screw up a smaller snake. But if you're feeding your snake every 10 days, it cannot be what I'm feeding them every week. It's going to be a good sized mouse. If you're feeding every 10 days, it should leave somewhat of a pretty decent sized lump. Where I feed mine every seven days, and I'm feeding just 
just a good lump. Nothing that's going to sit there for a couple days, but just enough that after a day or so, it, it doesn't really look like they ate. If I were feeding them every five days, which I don't do and I don't recommend, I do think there is a, uh, that's borderline power feeding. You're going to feed it something really small, something that does not leave a lump. That's how a lot of people will grow their snakes quickly. That is what people will say, I'm not power feeding, I'm just feeding small males more frequent. I do think there is a point when you're feeding too much. Just like us, if we were sitting there on the couch and we just ate a grape every minute, Every, or maybe every five minutes, we're gonna eat a grape. I'm eating a small meal, but eventually, my body needs time to, to catch back up. And, and I feel through what I've seen, again, no scientific journal, no scientific evidence, just from what I've seen through experience, is every seven days is right. Every 10 days is like if we were sitting there and we're eating two meals a day or one meal a day. Not that it's wrong, but you need to compensate. That two meals or that one meal need to be larger. This isn't hard stuff. I mean, let's just use logic and reason. So I hope this video helped you guys. We're gonna take one more look at this snake because I'm looking at it and she's awesome. So I'll get off the camera so you can take a good look. Really, really pretty snake. One of my favorites. Her nose rub is kind of starting to, to shed off. One or two more sheds and she'll get that. She just rubbed it once and that was it. So I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Until next week, we'll talk then. Thanks guys.